Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Seratori. My name is Cynthia. I'm the co-host. And Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Today is a great topic. We're going to be talking about um, intuition, psychic abilities, and discernment. So uh, this is definitely Bonnie's. Uh, <laughs> she knows everything about this. She's been, <laughs> uh, I think your whole life, you've been intuitive. Is that right, Bonnie? Well, or, yeah. 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 But yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, but everybody is. They just don't know it. And All right. whatever. We'll, we'll go ahead and get, get info. But go ahead. Let's that's perfect. Whatever. Actually, that's my first question. So is everyone intuitive? Like, can mm-hmm. you talk about that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone is born with the ability to sense energy. Okay. I don't care how little you are, you're sensing energy in the womb. You may feel it. You may have a, a sense a hearing of sight. It doesn't really matter, but everyone is born with the ability to sense energy. Sensing energy does mean it can be a, you know, like clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. Okay. So there's, there's different things that, that we all have, and there's different ways that uh, people get their information or sense, sense things. And all of them are a part of that intuition. So like I said, somebody might actually see energy, but when you're in the womb, people, people are literally still really connected to that deeper knowing what I call the knowing. Uh, this is why sometimes I'll see people are ba- uh, people in the, in the womb, like I'll go back and the fetus will be all like freaking you know, shaky or an- anxious because it's already sensing things. You know, it's not, it's, it's sensing it through that deep knowing that we all have. So the intuition, everyone is born with it. What happens though, over time is depending on the intuition Sometimes people are afraid of it. They want to push it away. Some people ignore it, kind of override it. And then it, it just gets deeper and deeper pushed away. So we feel less and less of that intuition. And then some people literally, you know, they start utilizing it and they pay attention to it. And when we do, we actually get more information, meaning it's like if you don't use something, it just kind of gets stagnant. But if you start using it, then then more and more starts to open up for a person. So you know, everyone's different. Everyone has their own, you know, belief systems and fears and anxieties around intuition. And uh, a lot of people get really afraid of it, but um, everyone is truly born intuitive. Everyone. So Bonnie, an issue that I've noticed a lot in when it comes to developing intuition or, or waking that part up again is when people maybe start to sense things again and they're accessing all these different maybe realms like spiritual realms and astral like realms and and maybe talking to different beings or or tapping into this these um different spaces they're not you know a lot of them are actually maybe uh, connecting with things that aren't necessarily good or positive and so I, I guess my question really is about the quality of information that people get or that how, and this goes into the question of like discernment. How do you know it's a no, like good, positive mm-hmm. information mm-hmm. and guidance and, and that knowing right. that you talked about and, and just something else that it doesn't have your best interest? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, here's the thing. Way back in the 80s, yeah, um, channeling was a big thing. So a lot of people are channeling and this kind of all ties in to everything that you're saying. But part of the problem is, is that you're dealing with people or beings on the other side. Some of them have been incarnating. Some of them have not, but the bottom line is this, they all have an agenda. They have something they want. Okay. Rarely are you going to find somebody on the astral planes to start communicating with uh, that's totally on your side, totally got your back, unless they're like a, a discarnate from another lifetime or from this lifetime, they passed over. But even then, their, their intentions, even though are good, it may not be the best for you. Okay, So people are connecting with, with other spirits, other uh, different energy frequencies. And if we are going to pay attention and trust 
these people, if we don't have that discernment, then the best thing to do is rather than going out to all these potential uh, beings that, that want to talk to you, go direct to your own, own self, you know, start communicating, knowing that when you're talking, <clears throat> when you actually think you're talking to God, you're actually talking to your own higher levels. Okay. Those are the aspects of you that have your back, that have the, your best interest, that will work for you, not against you. So um, anytime we're connecting, we want to we want to connect, we want to get information, we want to get guidance, we want to get help, we want to, you know, have have our higher levels help us, then just go direct. Okay. Again, coming back to what you were saying or asking about is the, the, the beings on the astral planes and their time and space, then dimensions, realms, down wormholes. I mean, all of these beings have their own agenda. Okay. So it, be, it can become dangerous. It can become um, hurtful, harmful uh, to be connecting with beings that you either don't know or that you're connecting with on the astral planes or, or in other time space dimensions. I have had many people get severely damaged for long periods of time by trusting and giving themselves over to other beings. You know, they're thinking they're doing something really good. Um, I'm having someone in particular I'm remembering, and she, for several ye couple years, totally gave over everything, even writing, giving permission to all these beings. They got whacked. Her and her friend got whacked, severely whacked, and their bodies were attacked all the time. And I mean, it was it was a nightmare for them. And I've met other people that did some kind of channeling or connecting and negative things happen. I directly had that experience back in 1976. That's when I, when I started channeling and, and, uh, uh, you know, it opened the doors to all kinds of bad things, really dangerous things. So really frightening things were happening. And so we closed all that down and stopped doing it. But basically, yeah, you don't know what you're dealing with. And then also that discernment, you know, what's happening is when we want information, okay, like, let's just say, I want to know something. And I got this potential, this beings coming to me telling me they know they can give me the answers. Because of my desire I might override my own inner knowing or that sense of, hey, this doesn't feel quite right, but I can override it because I want this information. I want someone to tell me. I want someone to give me the answers. So I trust something in someone else. Okay. So there's all kinds of things that happen to people, misinformation, misguidance, uh, damage, hurt, harm done to the person. Uh, so basically, you know, we really want to if we don't have discernment, I mean, because for example, that woman did not have discernment. She truly believed these beings were assisting that they had this great vision of helping humanity and went on and on. Okay. So she had this really deep belief that she was doing good. And, but the problem was she was connecting with beings that were, you know, attack, un undermining, wanting, wanting to cause problems and hurt her. Um, but the, the a bit, most people have what I call the knowing. So when something isn't quite right, we always get like this little inkling, like there's just something doesn't feel quite right. Can't put my finger on it. Don't know what it is. But whenever we have those, pay, you know, go with that. I don't, you know what I mean? Like believe that and trust that rather than overriding it. But and, and then the other part, what I want to do say is for those who don't seem to have that connection, that sense of you know, knowing or discernment, again, if you want answers, go direct, go direct to your own higher levels, to your own God self levels, your own oversoul levels. That is the best aspect of you because there's so many components, aspects of you, not just here, but other time, space dimensions. So you're working for you, you know, for this soul right here, not for over there, not for over there, but right here for this soul. So I would just always encourage people to to go direct. I could imagine someone listening to this now and thinking, well, what about angels? Because they're positive, right? And they're not maybe, uh, you know, negative. They don't have some negative agenda or they're not some random astral being, but they serve like the light. And so my question then is, what about the that aspect of what you could tap into, which is kind of the, one, the beings that are aligned with love? All right. So... I hate to break this, but 
not all angels are of the light. Okay, we have what I well, I discovered the black angels. I don't remember when in the 90s. Um, yeah, so there's other there's are there's angels, angelic beings, and people have this belief that they're all good, they're all of light. Well, unfortunately, that simply isn't true. Okay. And beings will present as though they're angels, angelic beings. Okay. You know, it's like how how far do you want to take it? You know, how far you want to be fooled, you know, how bound far down the rabbit hole you want to go, you know, trusting and hoping. See, the problem is is that people want to seek for answers. They want to know things. Okay. They want to know if they're going to make money or have a relationship or buy a house or, you know, get a job or whatever. There's always this desire to know. And they go to psychics. They go to, you know what I mean? They'll do things, read cars, do the tarot, do whatever, you know, they're trying to get answers. Okay. But that desire, not that it's a bad desire. Of course we want to know. All right. We'd like to have some guidance, understanding to help us. But unfortunately, we don't always connect with the right help or get the true answers, you know, and um, being able to discern is also coming from that deep place of knowing. So we want to, you know, be aware of what we're doing. And, and when we have these feelings like, I really want to know, am I going to have a relationship? When am I going to meet the one, you know, and I'll meet my soulmate and you know, you set yourself up, you just set yourself up, because then you start connecting with some spirit guide, and they're telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to do this, do that, but it never comes to fruition, you know, um, and then it causes frustration, but basically, it's that feeling, you know, I want to know something, it's got causes this deep drive desire inside, when we have that, that's when we get full, that's when other energies present, and fuck you up, mess you up, <laughs> interfere, cause you problems, you know, sometimes they have a great time laughing about, you know, what, what, what they're doing with you and what, how you're, you know, you're buying into stuff, trusting this. And, and, you know, unfortunately there are places in, in these realms and the astral, astral planes that are extremely dangerous, you know, very, very dangerous. And you, know, you don't want to be, if you don't know anything about these places, you don't want to be just, you know, flying around, scooting around, trusting all these energies, because you really don't know. Most of these beings, think about it. If you just logically think about it, most of the beings that you're connecting with have lived in a body. Most, many of them want to have a body again. They just are not understanding. They need to go home into the light to reincarnate. So a lot of them want to take over the body. That happens a lot. And <clears throat> when you can't trust these, pe these beings, they're just like people. And they got their own wounding. They got their own misperceptions. So, you know, you're listening to somebody who might be giving you advice or direction who isn't any more stable or conscious or aware than you are. You know what I mean? So it's like, you don't know what you're getting if you're just opening yourself up to uh, the spirit realms. Okay. Now, now people do have those, what we call guides, you know, we have guides within our own space, meaning some of us have maybe two or three, maybe four guides that, that come in at different times to help and assist. Okay. <clears throat> Connecting with those beings is better than just, you know, doing some kind of Ouija board or just trying to tune in or praying or asking for someone to come and give you some answers. You know, that's the next thing that would be the next best compared to going direct is use your own guides, use that kind of connection. Okay. But still, even, even still, these guides can still have an agenda. Okay. This is why for me, Direct is the best best way to do it. Always best. And when you say direct, you mean your higher levels, your higher self, and that's such a clear instruction. You don't have to think about well, who you're going to connect with now to get information. You just go straight to the source, basically. So, yeah, but how yeah. do you actually do that though? Like for people who are listening to this thing, like well, how do you actually connect with your higher levels, your higher self? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's, it's no, not much different than like if you're wanting to connect with somebody else or connecting at a soul level with someone else. But basically now what you're doing is you're taking your awareness and you, if you've not done this before, it's quite simple. Basically, 
what you're going to do is you're just going to close your eyes. You're going to take your awareness and rise up above your body, but you're going to be asking now for your own higher levels to present to you. You want to meet your higher levels. Okay. So you can go ahead and imagine that you're in a beautiful place. Like some people like a waterfall or a river, or ocean, sand, beaches, whatever. You can imagine a place like that. Okay. And then what you do is you like, for example, let's just say I want to meet my higher levels. I'm going to go to this beautiful waterfall that I've been to many times as a beautiful rock. I'm going to sit on that rock and I'm going to ask my own higher levels to present. And as I sit waiting and asking and opening that that invite, then what happens is, you know, I'll start to get a sense of or I even might see if I see energy, I might feel it. I might hear them, I might have the knowing, I might actually have the visuals of them presenting. Now, they can present in just color and light frequency, but sometimes, oftentimes, they will present in physical form because that's how we relate to one another. You know, we're not thinking of somebody, like when we think of our higher levels, we're probably still thinking they look like a body like us, okay? When truthfully, they are their consciousness, their, their energy frequency, okay, that vibrates at a higher, at a certain frequency but it can present in different forms. So once you meet your higher levels, connect with them, have a little conversation, get to know them so that when you do want information, you don't have to go to the waterfall on the rock every time. It's like pretty soon, it's like, boom, you got that direct connection. And then, you know, you want to go even higher, higher frequency, higher vibrational frequency, then take your awareness into the super consciousness. Okay, so with the super consciousness, is the consciousness of you before you completely emerge into the oneness of the all that is, okay? When we merge into oneness, it's, it's all existent simultaneously. It's pure awareness. There's nothing but that. It's the all that is, okay? But prior to that, right in that super consciousness, it's all this really intense energy of awareness and consciousness and a lot of movement, but you can go into that energy, taking your awareness and go right in there and just be in that consciousness, be in that awareness, be in that super consciousness and get a sense of what that is, what it feels like. So, you know, there's different, you can do this with all the levels of who you are, <clears throat> getting a sense of, but what you really want to do is connect because your, your higher levels are the ones that actually connect with other people's higher levels and co-create together, okay? So, you know, I mean, it's crazy, but if there's soul agreements, like for an example, when I live in Colorado and I live in Georgia, how'd that happen? Well, and why am I here, okay? So I absolutely know why I came here, but I didn't know then. I thought it was to see for something different, but my dog had to die. I had to go on a, you know, six-week road trip and devastated, and then ended up here and bought this house, met the owner, but the owner was the one I was supposed to meet. So from Colorado, all these things happen. So my high, they, his higher levels, my higher levels, they were working together, co-create this, get me in here to Georgia so I could get the next level of my own unraveling. <laughs> and I did. So yeah, that's how it's like, that's what happens. That's how it works. Our, our, our higher levels are communicating. You want something done. You want give the go ahead or whatever talk go direct and for people listening right now i just want to say that this process that you just talked about you go in very very deeply in master class three and that one is the self-mastery and empowerment something like i don't remember exact name but it's master class number three and you yeah. you talk about this a lot and you actually guide people through mm -hmm. um, that experience to connect with each one of those levels right and, right um, you even yeah. do a demo with several mm -hmm. people and and they share their experiences with yeah, yeah. with that exercise it's a really great great one so i'm gonna leave a link below if people mm -hmm. want to uh, purchase that one yeah that's a good they're all good the master class series are amazing yeah. they are some of the best stuff that you've mm -hmm. done really mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. everybody who uh <laughs> Everybody who ha knows your work needs to get it, I feel. For yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, earlier, Bonnie, you were talking about how okay, connecting with other other realms and, and these spiritual realms and such. And and it brought to mind um, the idea of, you know, how we create our reality and, and 
we attract what we are basically from our subconscious in the physical reality. But this concept is also true in the spiritual realms as well, right? So if we're trying to connect with like different beings for answers and such, we're connecting with all of our wounding kind of, right? Like beings that might represent that. Is that, <laughs> is that true? Is that, do you know what I'm trying to ask? Yeah, I know. No, yes. Okay. So yes, our unconscious is what dictates our reality. Okay. We may or may not even be aware of that. And we may or not e be aware that, that we've got wounding. You know what I'm saying? We, we just might be thinking we're victims to life. Okay. But what you're asking is when we connect with the spirit realms, that it's actually true. It's whatever you're believing you deserve. Okay. If you still holding on to your, your should be punished or self-sacrificed or that there's something wrong with you, you're not loved, uh, all these misperceptions, you're going to find the perfect being out there to help have more e experiences <laughs> of your own wounding. Yes, that will happen. And then again, you know, there are particular beings that you are going to connect with. Okay. And, and that's part of soul agreements, uh, soul contracts, uh, the unraveling of different things. We have stuff that people present, come together to unravel and to clear. I mean, that's what, that's what everything's really about, Cynthia. Everybody, we're doing a soul dance with everybody. Okay. And it's always about unraveling and clearing so that we, as a soul evolving, can shine the light of who we are, share the gift of ourselves, and just be free in that fullest expression of a soul in a physical form, uninhibited, not shattered, broken, not wounded, not a victim, you know, but really just being that true authentic self that, that only can happen when the heart is open and we've cleared out a lot, you know, massive amounts of our wounding. And then we, then we're able to really just be that, be that who we are, which is what, that's the purpose of our soul, soul's lives anyway, is that to shine that light of who we really are. So that brings us really back always to that, what you're saying, which is doing your inner work and clearing. And this will actually ties into something I was going to ask you later, um, but I'm going to ask you now because it, you just brought up that um, about how we're here to to do our work. We're here to shine our light and such. So yeah. I, earlier you talked about how people, they want to open up their intuition or ask questions because they're, you know, they want to know about the future. They want to know if like this thing is the right thing to do and that thing's the right thing to do. And, you know, I had that going on for me for years where I was trying to connect with, yeah. with my intuition knowing, should I do this? Should I do that? What's the right thing? Right. Eventually, I just got to the point where I said, well, you know what? I just have to clear my stuff. <laughs> really? Because, <laughs> yeah, clear your because, stuff. Yeah. Right. And, and so it, it, in a way, it's sort of what I came to conclude was, um, well, if I'm wanting my intuition to help me with all these things, because maybe I'm afraid of like the future or the unknown, and I'm afraid of like certain things maybe occurring, but I'm creating those things right so shouldn't i just clear myself so i'm in a state of consciousness where if i turn right or left it's okay like it's going to work out so i don't necessarily in that state i don't necessarily need intuition right i'm just in the flow of life right. or something right like, in do, the flow. Can you talk about maybe like all of that how that ties in and stuff yeah i mean we're here's the thing <laughs> you're going to be doing whatever you're going to be doing. Okay. And there are really no mistakes. Okay. And there really are no victims. So partly what happens is, is we are always co-creating whatever beliefs we've got, uh, then we're going to co-create that with somebody else so that we can wake up to those beliefs and unravel and clear them. Okay. I mean, everything is about coming together at a, you know, with another soul and the entire purpose for everyone is to truly be free, free, okay? So we come together, we have all these past lives, we got our karma, we got all this agreements and contracts, and ultimately we're just all trying to wake up. That's what it's all about, is just that total waking up. And we come together with certain people, believing that we're gonna do it at, you know, at the higher levels we're believing we're gonna do it. Here, we're just, you know, this is where we co-create like, 
you did this to me and and now you know i'm blaming you that means you know you you victimized me but here here's the thing is there really are no victims because it's always a co-creation so if you are trying to unravel something from your life let's just use this lifetime let's just say there's still some trauma and you experience that let's just say there's fear of relationship or you know the unknown of relationship and maybe that makes makes a person feel uncomfortable um, so what's going to happen is, you know, someone, whatever that wound is, you're going to attract somebody to activate that wound, you know, that feeling of being unsafe or feeling, you know, whatever that is. And that person's going to activate that wound and you're going to feel like, oh my goodness, this person's in my life. I feel like I'm a victim. And yet you're not aware that you've got the victim consciousness that there's wounding inside that has to get unraveled, that you called this person in, your higher levels came together so that you could activate that wound and unravel it and clear it. But unfortunately, most everyone doesn't do that. They believe, oh, this person came into my life. Why did they come into my life? They're hurting me. And then you blame, blame, and then nothing gets cleared or healed. Nothing changes, okay? But when you wake up and understand what's really going on here, that you called it in, you're not a victim. You're trying to unravel a deep wounding within, and we need something or someone to activate it, to make it alive so we feel it. Kind of like me driving all the way across, you know, moving to Georgia, thinking it was for some different reason, but I, there was some, uh, some deep core wounding that had to get unraveled, you know, and it had to get activated. So it's true for everyone. And, and the sooner we start coming out of believing we're victims, then, you know, the sooner we get more empowered and understand that, ah, oh, co-creating our lives, I'm calling this in, I need to unravel something so that I can be free and not call this in anymore. So um, a block that people, a lot of people have is uh, like to intuition is not trusting, right? Not trusting their intuition or um, so. And, you know, this, I guess, occurs over time with traumas maybe, or it may be someone try to follow what they thought was um, a truth, a feeling, and then it didn't really work out, right? So then they kind of learn not to trust that what they thought was their knowing. And so when someone wants to really learn to do this work again, like open back up to learning um, how to connect with that knowing again, but they don't have trust in it, like what mm -hmm. would you recommend for people who are in that situation? I would, I would take baby steps, okay? What I mean by that is start again, just kind of like uh, play with it. Like maybe, um, like going, this is a simple one, like, like driving, going to the store, you might feel all of a sudden like a tiny little inkling to turn down this row, then follow it. Okay. Let's say you're walking down the aisles and you have this kind of inkling thought. It just kind of comes floating through. Oh, you need some bread, but your mind, you go, no, no, no. Cause you're remembering you, you got bread, you got it, all that stuff. But then you get home and realize, oh yeah, I need bread. So play, you know what I mean? Like when these little, little, little kind of inklings come in, pay attention, follow through. And what you're doing is you're reconnecting with your own knowing. And the more you play with that, the more that you follow through when you're getting a knowing or getting a sense, the more you follow through, the more it will present, the more it will come to your awareness. Another thing too, people is knowing is within deep in here. When you don't when you're trying to figure something out and you're thinking, okay, is that the knowing? Where did it, where did it come from? Okay, mind thoughts, trying to figure stuff out, you're gonna feel it up here in the mind. But the knowing you feel from within. Okay. I'm not talking like an anxiety in your gut, you know what I mean? Like um, you get nervous or anxious. I'm talking about that subtle energy that's deep inside that is an absolute truth, an absolute knowing, and, and it happens in the core, deep, deep, deep within, you have that knowing. And everybody has this. It's just a matter of developing it, reconnecting with it, you know, paying attention, following through. When you do have these little inklings, little thoughts, little sensations, little knowings, you follow through. And then pretty soon more and more happens. You can also start asking, like, 
you know, like I'm going to go, I'm going to go on a road trip and I just want to be guided. Like, I don't know where I'm going to stop. I don't know where I'm going to stay, but I just want to know. I just want to have that knowing when it's time, when it's time for me to pull over, you know? And, you know, so you start asking and putting yourself in situations where you're inviting that knowing to present for you. Okay. So you could be driving down the highway and pretty in, you might be thinking, well, I think I can go drive another hour, but all of a sudden you kind of have this little thought, little sin, minute, minute, finite frequency that kind of gives you the sense of, I think I need to stop here. You know, I'm going to pull off at this exit. You just have that little, and then you find a perfect place and something, you know, really cool things happen. Okay. So inviting it, asking it, paying attention, listening, but remember it doesn't come up from here. It's in here, deep inside. So I've heard you talk about this before, about how it arises, the answers arise rather than drops in or something like that mentally. Or, and I've just sat with myself and tried that. And <laughs> <laughs> I I just can't tell. I, I don't, I for some reason, that it doesn't feel any different. Or I sometimes I'll ask and then it doesn't, I don't get anything, right? Mm-hmm. So what if I don't get any feeling at all when if I, if I ask? Let's just say a simple question, like a yes or no question. I don't get any feeling at all. Like what's, what could be there? Is it a block when people are experiencing Sure on block. Sure on block. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's a, like you have a misperception of what it's going to feel like, what it's going to look like, trying too hard, trying to make something happen, um, waiting, like, like, you know, like wanting it to happen. Okay. All those things are energy frequencies that interfere. This is subtle. You have to just relax, let it present let it come forth. And, you know, here's the thing. If you're feeling like, like it's not happening, then, then let it go. Let it be. Stop. Just friggin' stop trying. Okay. Give up, give up the trying. Accept. Okay. It's not happening. Let it be and get on with your life. And guess what'll happen? It'll start presenting. <laughs> Yeah, because I can see like even with, you know, like when you're when you're trying, it's like they're, you're waiting for something. There's a trying, waiting, looking for something, you know, waiting for the answer to present or looking, waiting for something. It doesn't work that way. It's like it's a, it, it's it's way deeper. And that also brings up the idea of like what if you're attached to maybe an answer, then it would you it, that it was like a filter for truth or something that it won't, it won't come through accurately if, if you're kind of attached to something. Yeah. If you have a, like, if you have a, a belief that, that, that you've got the answer, then when the real answer presents, you're not going to believe it because you have a misperception. You're, you know, you've got a belief and that, you know, your belief is going to win over your knowing. So let's talk a little bit more about different blocks and of intuition, because that would help people to uh, unravel what they need so that they can have clear connection with their knowing. And so what are some common blocks? And I think I even heard you talk about how there are groups of people that are actually intentionally blocking people's intuition, especially now. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, You've got one percenters, which is the billionaire built multi-billionaires who own the world, who absolutely are interfering with people, um, putting implants and different different structures, different mechanism devices to block you, stop you. Um, You've got military government. You've got aliens. um, You've got your own belief systems, misperceptions of reality, conclusions that you've got anchored in your subconscious. And. Um, you can block your own self, you know, like the, all your own beliefs can uh, inhibit and interfere with your own knowing. Like, for example, like when you're saying that for you, you know, you're asking yes or no, what's happening, you can also have discarnates, which is what partly what's happening. You got a discarnate that's kind of like doing this kind of thing, looking around, waiting for the answer. That's a discarnate. That's not you. Um, then you can also have interferences, other kinds of interferences from frequencies, discarnates, uh, beings outside the body on the astral planes, uh, interfering, um, and also discarnates in the body that are also interfering. Um, there can be traumas carried over from past lives where you've had in- experiences 
uh, of being intuitive or being a psychic or being a healer or whatever and severe, frightening, damaging, horrific experiences will block you, keep you from wanting to open your own abilities. I mean, there's, I mean, it just goes on and on. I mean, you know, past life stuff, different traumas, different experiences that you had, different conclusions, you know, taking things personally. I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. And then also feeling like, oh, I caused harm. Therefore I deserve to not have this ability or whatever. You know, there's all these lifetimes where people on some level, most everyone has experienced some kind of, you know, healing work or shamanic work or, or wizardry, sorcery, witchcraft, whatever, you know, they dabbled in all these different things and then have conclusions and beliefs around those things. So, I mean, the list goes on and on, it, it, you know, in order to really know, it's like, it's, it's individual, you know what I mean? It's like, if you really want to know what's up with you, then I would work with somebody who can actually track and unravel and clear so that a person can be freed and be more open and available to these, uh, you know, the ability to open up your, you know, open up that knowing, open up your, to your own self. But also too, here's another piece, like people, when they, a lot of people can't connect with their emotions, okay? The, there's major blockages with, with in that. So there's also those kinds of energies also can, people that have a lot of damage, a lot of wounding, a lot of uh, uh, interferences can also, you know, the blocks and stops and inhibits a person's ability to connect. I mean, it, there's just so many different things in the way that can be in the way. And you do have a several group clearings, group, group energy clearings in your shop um, that are around intuition. One is called strengthening intuition. The other is called blocks to truth. Mm. And I'll leave the links for those. Um, once again, any of these, uh, even though they're replays, they're just as powerful as if you were to show up live. So don't worry if, if some of you are wondering about that. They're just as effective. And you also have a um, truth talk episode on uh, discernment and mm. I, I don't know yet how to how we could have people purchase the old um the old truth talks but once that's available i'll be uh, putting it in the description as well but you also have an upcoming small group energy clearing called um third eye chakra so that's obviously going to oh, be related right, to right, this right, right? so yeah, could you talk yeah, yeah. about yeah the relation between the third eye chakra and um and, and intuition yeah, I mean, people have blockages in the third eye. It could be, again, a multitude of reasons. You know what I mean? They saw something in the past they don't want to see anymore. They got, you know, the, the third eye got damaged. You got cursed. You got, you know, had experiences and you just kind of shut things down. So there's all these different things that can happen. And, you know, so people shut down their ability to see. And the seeing means seeing with your third eye, in your mind's eye, seeing that you, what you cannot see with your eyes. And it doesn't just because you don't see with your eyes doesn't mean that you can't have really strong abilities. You know, some people really have the ability that they hear energy, they, they track energy that way, they get the knowing or they get that they're empathics, they're feeling energy. So, but the third eye is like people, most people would like to have that third eye open, they want to be able to sense energy, see energy, track energy through that third eye. And you know, there can be blockages, but there's different ways to start developing that. But again, if you've got severe damage in that third eye, it needs to be cleaned up. You know, if you got past, let's just say you got, let's just say that there was some kind of, you uh, know, like a burning or some kind of damage, severe damage to that third eye, that can be carried over from past lives. So that, that energy, need that experience, trauma has to get cleaned up, you know, so uh, the third eye is probably one of the people think it's the best way to get information. I think the knowing is actually the best way because that's like pure, pure, pure knowing, you know, even with our ability to see things, it doesn't mean that we're going to interpret what we see correctly. You know what I'm saying? But when you got the knowing, it's like you can't, it's you, you can't make it into something that it isn't. It's like, like, like pure, pure, pure knowing. So yeah, the development of the third eye is, is, uh, something a lot of people want to do. 
Most people can open up the third eye. And again, there can be blockages and different, different things that are happening to block it. So again, clean it up, find out what's up, get help. And you do have a workshop or a class, a program called Intuitive You. Right. And um, that hasn't happened in maybe two years or so. Is there plans to have Intuitive You again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting ready to set that up again. Yeah, it's time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so that, can you tell us about, about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a class that helps you to, to open up your intuition, whether it's your third eye, whether it's your sense of hearing or knowing or um, uh, empathing. I mean, it, it's just however you naturally, organically seem to begin to open to your intuition. That's what you're encouraged. And I mean, there's different techniques, different ways to start opening up the third eye um and different different tech you know different things to help you just begin to open up to your own intuition being able to track things to sense energies to see things to call forth things so it's a development of your intuition developing the abilities and the skills to awaken your intuition how long is that i believe it's six weeks a couple hours two to three hours for six weeks it sounds like I need this um, intuitive view. So it, when it does open up, I'm in there. Okay, cool. There Hopefully you go. I see a lot of other people listening to this as uh, classmates. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you again, Bonnie. Once again, there is that third eye chakra clearing that will happen April 9th. I'll leave the description below. So everybody mm -hmm. interested in that. It's one of these small group energy clearings. So it's even more powerful than the, the uh, regular group energy clearings. Yeah, it's, so, a full, uh, it's almost a full hour of actually clearing out that third eye. And everybody who writes about their experiences, I actually unravel all of those experiences for everyone. It's very, very potent, very powerful. All right. Thank you again so much, Bonnie. I hope we got into everything. I think I skipped some questions, but it was a big topic. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. So thank you again, everybody, for listening to Consciousness Unleashed. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video, subscribe, and comment below uh, what you think about this episode. And then also, if you're on, on Apple, please leave a review for Consciousness Unleashed. Thank you once again, Bonnie. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you again next time.